Hello and welcome to a look at the Money Weighted Rate of Return with me, Andy Duncan, here at Finlingo.com. There are several ways of working out a rate of return on investments over time, but this is useful when a financial advisor is deciding on contributions and withdrawals in a fund. Before watching this video, if you're unfamiliar with the internal rate of return, you may just want to watch our video on that before watching this one. If you are good with the internal rate of return, then we're all good to go. Working out a money-weighted rate of return is just like working out an internal rate of return. There's a series of cash flows into an investment over time, and there's a series of cash flows out of the same investment. Our investor, Sean, is going to accumulate some shares in the Finlingo Jet Ski Company on Finlingo Island. This company has a code of FJS. Over a period of two years, he's going to collect dividends from these shares, and at the end of that time, he's going to cash everything out and sell all the shares. The FJS share price starts out at $70.36. At the beginning of the first year, Sean buys two of these shares for a total of $140.72. At the end of the first year, FJS declare a share dividend of $6.33 per share. So Sean gets a cash sum of $12.66. Now, he's really impressed by this, so he goes out and buys four more shares. But in that year, they've now gone up to a price of $74.58. So the four shares cost Sean a total of $298.32. So far, so good. Sean's now got six shares and hopes they're going to do well for one more year before he sells them. At the end of this second year, FJS announce another share dividend of $6.71 per share. Because Sean now has six shares, this gives him a total dividend payout this year of $40.26. Right after collecting that second dividend, he decides to sell every single share so he can buy a really big ice cream. The FGS share price has now gone up to $88, so that means Sean gets another $528 once he sells everything back to the market. So far, it's been a great investment. Now, to get the money-weighted rate of return, we need to add everything up. At the start, Sean bought the first two shares for a total of $140.72. After one year buying four new shares and receiving two dividends, he spent in total another $285.66. At the end of the two-year investment, Sean got six dividends and sold six shares to get a grand total of $568.26. Now let's take all those cash flow figures and turn them into an internal rate of return. So we have a CF0 of minus $140.72. The CF1 is equal to minus $285.66. And the CF2 is equal to a positive $568.26. Now we can calculate the IRR on a financial calculator, and this will give us approximately 23.63%. But let's just do all that on a cunning spreadsheet I prepared earlier, just to make sure all the mathematics checks out. So, we've got a year zero share price of $70.36. We bought two shares. We got a year one dividend of $6.33, and the year one share price was $74.58, and we bought four of those. The dividend at the end of the second year is $6.71, and the share price when we sold everything was $88 a share. In the real world, you just take the market price and multiply that by the total number of shares you have, just to get a figure. Getting back to this calculation, the numbers do check out, so let's now try a question on finlingo.com to see if we can repeat this process. Note down the information, then slowly work through all the figures using the methodology to get to that IRR calculation. Once you've got all the total cash flows, plug these into your financial calculator using the IRR method, and this will hopefully give you the right answer. Now we check for this on Finlingo. Select it and move on. Keep going till you've got a really good handle on working out a money-weighted rate of return, and be gone in less than 60 seconds. Head over now to finlingo.com where you can answer infinite questions on this money-weighted rate of return until you've got it really down to a fine art. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.